I love doing this conning. <laughs> So I'm going to show you how to assemble your burrito like a legend. You can all watch me. <laughs> You'll get it. You'll go. Hold. Oh. It wouldn't oh. be a beach trip without 105 having a whoopsie in his car. That's why you don't pull over for people. Oh, how are you going to get out of your car? Well, our journey's kicked off. We're on the 90-minute MyCat ferry ride over to Morton Islands, which is just left from the port of Brisbane. Uh, it's looking like the weather's gonna hold off for us, which is lovely. A couple of days of sunshine and, and heaps to do over on the island. This is gonna take about an hour and a half, so I'm gonna go air down, have a nap, have a coffee, and we'll see you on the island. Now, Morton's traditional name is actually Morgumpen, which translates to place of sand hills. And by the end of this episode, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. You're probably wondering where the Naughty 40 is and what this 80 series is that I'm driving in the episode. Well, the day before we were meant to head to Morton, the Naughty 40 was stolen. So, I borrowed my mate Hayden's spare 80 and we sent it with the crew anyway. We just jumped off the ferry, we're on Morton Island now. Jump in the convoy, we've got a mad looking crew behind us. We've got Andy from PVS in his freshly coil converted 2022 76. We've got Max and Grace in the uh, HD105 with that turbo one I'd said. We've also got the camera crew in the old Shorey rig. Um, and we've got Hayden joining us tomorrow, the big boss man at HD. Now, we're on an inland track at the moment, which is just past Benoa Campground. Um, and this sort of diverts us around the Tangaluma Airport. Um, and we're not on our way north at the moment. We'll cross over to the east coast of the island and hit up a couple of my favorite spots. We're gonna do the Cape Morton Lighthouse been here for over 150 years, was the first ever Queensland lighthouse and uh, it's been on my bucket list for a while so we're gonna go check that out. Then once we've done that I reckon we might head over to Honeymoon Bay Lookout, have a little squiz and potentially even have a splash in the Champagne Pools here. So let's get after it. One thing you might not know about Morton Island is that it's actually 95% national parks and is full of this thick, gorgeous bushland. And we were on just one of the many inland tracks that are peppered all over the island and it was the perfect opportunity to steal the keys from the Turbo 1FZ 105 series and have a steer. We're in the Turbo 1FZ and this is one of those cars where you just need to, you just need to hear it to appreciate it. Oh my god, it's like sheer terror in my face. It's so good. I like steps out like, ah! Got a good pull up ahead. <laughs> that is why FTEs can get in the bin and just diesels in general. And uh, also, if you have my car, can you give it back? <laughs> side note. Please, yeah. Quick, quick side note. Yeah, this thing's mad. <laughs> like fuel consumption, I'd hate to know real time. Oh no, I you can see it in real time. Yeah. yeah. The fuel gauge moves as quick as the taco. <laughs> <laughs> the opposite direction. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Now, despite Morton Island being the third largest sand island in the world, it's a lot smaller compared to some of its neighbours such as Fraser. But even then, it feels so remote when you're driving down tracks like these. You could really be in the middle of anywhere. So I believe the lighthouse is somewhere. That way? Oh. Yeah. Quick 
drive up the North Point Inland Track, we have arrived at the Cape Morton Lighthouse. Now this little beauty was first lit in 1857, I believe. They're making it well over 150 years old. It was actually the first ever lighthouse built in Queensland. So it's a pretty cool little historic monument here on the island, right up the North End. Uh, also, all the sandstone used in the making of this lighthouse was quarried from this exact island. So that's a pretty interesting thing as well. Uh, and I believe there actually used to be like a little community that's all based up here right on the point as well. And uh, there's a lot of little sort of stone outhouses and housing uh, that we used back when this was a heavily manned lighthouse. So lots of little history here. If you come to Morton, you'd be silly not to come up and check it out. Have a walk around and check out the awesome 360 views of the island. While we were up north, the next perfect stop on our bucket list was going to be Honeymoon Bay. What's in here? Tequila. Tequila. Tequila of the world. Hello. Fuck Hello. The world. Marg mix, baby. Tequila of the world. Hello. 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 Sorry, you don't have to go to the water. Just yeah. off the beach. Oh, the rummage bus. Us. My rummage bus. The old story rig. Turbo FZ dog. And some f***ing GQ patrol on the end. Okay. So weird. I don't remember inviting patrols. Kidding. Andy 76. Hey. Everyone that comes. <laughs> oh! Nah, no, close. Oh. Oh. G'day guys. Um, we just found an 80 series. We owned dog. this car. <laughs> the problem was, we didn't have a key. This is a 105 series spare key. And the trick is, because you don't want to smash a screwdriver into the barrel, is you just sort of gotta <laughs> jimmy this until the pins wiggle and you can get it in the ignition spot. But it's really annoying and very hard to do. So, I need a history of stealing cars. <laughs> Many tic tacs later. Just like that. And then what we do, we leave it just before it locks. And you. Keys meant to come out. What a world we live in. Like a dream. <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> Woo! Honeymoon Bay. Honeymoon Bay, here we come. I think the plan is we're going to walk to the lookout. We've got the fan. <laughs> <laughs> We've got everyone. We've got GoPros going everywhere. And then hopefully we can walk down to Champagne Pools. We'll go for a swim. No cameras. Cameras, please. Paparazzi. Sorry, I'm not up to your standards, sir. I have high standards. There are lots of World War II things on this island. Fun fact. I might even show you some. Let's just read this side. Morton Island was something, something, something. What is this? It smells like asbestos. <laughs> Do you reckon it tastes like it? Why does it sound so it sounds bigger than it should be inside? I reckon it's a, like the entry to a bunker. There's heaps of World War II stuff all over the island. I think in Cowan, Cowan, there's a old World War II bunker as well. <laughs> I'm no expert, but we might be about to stumble on paradise. There's also a million cars parked here, so we, so we, we could have, we, <laughs> we could have driven. Is this where we were not? Were we not here yeah. this morning? We were here. Oh, guys, I'm sorry. Maybe we go the other path. <laughs> Thoughts, everyone. This is what happens when you're unprepared as f yeah. This looks like it could be paradise. Yeah. I know I did just say that about the other place, which we'd already been to today. But this might actually be paradise now. Oh my god, this is fucking We're about to find out. This is like bad time to have weak ankles. Oh, stop it. This is very nice. Now, being Honeymoon Bay, I believe Sam and I have a little surprise for you guys later. We've been talking about making out on camera. We're gonna kiss. We're gonna kiss. You wanna know what else? K triple I T H. Kiss. Andy may even join in. <laughs> nice. Wait, so are we staying here? Or are we going to where? Oh, we got to the 
Pushy on about. Yeah, right. <laughs> so this is Honeymoon Beach. Honeymoon Bay lookout is up there. Just past this Greek Adonis. Um, and we're actually quite close to Champagne Pools, so we might... I actually think Champagne Pools might be just up over that rock there, so... We might go and have a little look in a second, but... This is paradise. Morton... Turning the weather on for us in the best way possible. Ah! Not warm, not warm, not warm. Alright, no, 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 it's getting better. Now that my, my little balls are in... Okay. Oh, I'm gonna go under here. Oh, no. you can see but up there that's the um <laughs> oh, so nice that's the lighthouse just out there so it's about a, not even a two kilometer drive from the lighthouse to here this is um north point campground and you can just walk right here honeymoon honeymoon beach water lovely crystal clear you probably can't see but there's not even not even 10 people on the beach. You basically got a private beach yourself. So nice. Everyone's loving it. Maddie, Grace, Max, Andy. But like, look at the bloody like house. Well, you don't get water, water this clear pretty much anywhere else. Have a look. Well, that is Honeymoon Beach. We are only a stone's throw from the lighthouse. It's about a two kilometre drive and a 500 metre walk to get here. And what you are left with is about 150 metres of pristine, dead quiet beach. There's one other family here. And other than that, we've had the place to ourselves. Next up is probably my favourite bit of Morton. We are going to head to Tangaluma Rex, go and do a bit of snorkeling. The sun's out, the water's gorgeous, super clear. I'm excited. Max got his ass out on camera before, so we're going to put that in the edit right. Now it's gone, you'll never see it again. We'll see you at Tangaluma. Now, you'd think a simple beach drive up to the wrecks would go pretty smoothly, right? Well, not really. Not quite. Calf up. I'd be nice once <laughs> to one person. <laughs> oh no. Oh. <laughs> well, um, that's why you don't pull over for people. They don't deserve it. Hello there. So, Little soft boggy inland track. Listen, hold on. Um, soft inland boggy little track, which like momentum is your friend. We all got through, but Max had to let a caravan through. Um, pulled off to the side and got like down to his diff. So, what that means is we're gonna try and yeet him down here and pull him sort of away from the damage and hope for the best. After a quick recovery for Max, we were back on track. But one thing that's really important to remember with any island that you might be driving on is to research your tides. It doesn't take much for the tide to come in and you could be completely cut off beach access. So you do have to know your way around them. So Grace. This Max. It looked like a wreck to you in the distance. It does actually. Must have been what Sam was talking about earlier. You know there's a total of how many did you say? I don't know. Ships wrecked? 15. 15? I, yeah, maybe. Yeah. I thought 18, but I, I could be completely wrong. I think wrong. you're wrong, but we'll see. Yeah, well, you know. I think it's safe to say it does not get any better than this. I mean, I moved to Queensland, oh, not too long ago, and wow. This is my first proper trip up in Queensland in the 76. I haven't even, don't even have door trims, um, speakers are non-existent. My Yui Boom is that, um, but yeah, wow. This really makes it worthwhile. We're here at Tangaluma. Now, there's a couple of fun facts to know about Tangaluma, isn't there, girls? 
isn't it? Okay, so behind me here is my favorite part of Morton, Tangalooma Wreck. This thing has been here since the 60s and is a man-made reef comprising of 15 intentionally sunk ships and it sort of creates this really long sort of uh, artificial harbour if you will for smaller boats to moor on the inside of as you can see there so it sort of takes the, the current and the swell away it's just a stone's throw from the Tangaluma resort which is super sick and Tangaluma actually translates to where fish gather um, so hopefully we're going to prove that today how we're going to prove that because the water is absolutely freezing is with one of these guys one of these, yes, sir. We have rented some see-through kayaks. We're gonna go out, have a swim around, try and bob our way through here. You can see the current is flowing really strongly through here. I'm gonna bring the GoPro, we're gonna go take a look, see what we can and can't see and find. It's gonna be wild, let's have a go. Alright, well we've got the low riding kayak with my big ass in the back of it, but I don't know if you can see all the fish through the kayak, definitely worth doing. And um, it's pretty cool because it means you can sort of kayak all the way out through here um, in, between the, uh, in between each wreck, which is super sick. And uh, there's a lot, a lot of sea life out here, which is super mad. And these things, are, I don't know, like 30 or 40 bucks per hour. So if you've got kids or anything, or, or you, uh, you're not as brave in the cold water as I am over this side, then uh, it's a great idea. How good. Now a great tip for young players heading over to Morton for the first time is book your campsites early so that you can get the prime spots because trust me when I say they fill up quick. Well, what a massive day it's been. We went and saw the lighthouse, we've done the Tangaluma, we even headed out to Honeymoon Beach uh, and had a look around there. So much to see and do on Morton. We've got three more days, three more nights of this absolute paradise, uh, and I cannot wait. 50 metres that way is the beach. Sun is setting, crystal clear waters, warm as, no wind. Beach campsites don't get much better than this. What I want to show you guys is something kind of interesting. That's a $200 swag that we bought the night before the trip. And what you'll probably see is that this isn't the Naughty 40. This is just uh, Hayden from HD Automotive's rummage bus, we call it. Chaos in here, right? A fridge that we borrowed from one of the boys back at HD Automotive, no drawers. It's actually really refreshing to go bare bones camping again. No fancy gizmos, no gadgets, none of that. It's just sort of simple, everything works. Up until 24 hours ago, I didn't even have a 12 volt system. So this is actually super nice and kind of humbling to be honest. It sort of reminds me, should remind you guys that you don't need $200,000 rigs and you know wild 12 volt systems to get to places like this. Buy your permits, book the ferry, come over in your five grand petrol 80 series, have the best time of your life. Anyway, take a rip around these uh, more impressive camps and uh, saps that people have got because there are some way nicer ones than I have. And then I reckon it's time to hang out with the guys, grab some drinks, have a feed. See you guys soon. at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, yeah. oh, that's fine. That's, hey, well, that's actually, good. Just on the... Oh my god. Saturday morning and the weather is looking like an absolute pearl. We had a bit of rain last night, which means sandboarding today might be a little bit interesting, but we're gonna give it a go anyway. It is hot. As well, which means I'm gonna to need to get a swim in at some stage. So I reckon we head down to Big Sand Hills first up, head to Blue Lagoon after that with the guys. We've got Hayden coming over from the mainland today at about 1.30, 2 o'clock. See if we can't do some uh, scurfing behind a couple of cars. And then Desarva, I've got a treat for everyone, including Hayden. Uh, we're gonna take them to a little sneaky spot down south. Uh, cold drinks, yummy food, so it's gonna be great. Let's finish packing up this campsite, hit the sand, and uh, get into it.
sort of crossover between the west and the east coast um, just south of Benua campground it's where you jump onto this road and it's nice because it's one way which means you don't have that sort of stress of someone coming around the corner and uh, you know the risk of a head-on and the sort of flora and fauna here on Morton is so unique it's so stunning when the sun's out you know you've got this nice shaded inland track nice soft roads so it feels like you could be anywhere in the world it's absolute paradise couldn't be more stoked Road and punted around six, eight kilometres across over to the eastern beach. Now this is actually six continuous beaches stretching all next to each other for around 27 or 28 kilometres. Uh, and this is the surf side of the island as you can probably imagine with zero protection from the elements or from the swell. So you'll catch a lot of surfers over here. There's actually a little bit of a wider sand section than what you might find on the west coast too. So if you've got a lot of cars and you want to sort of set up for a day and not be worried about the tides coming in and out and people needing to get past you, then the east coast is probably where you want to be. It's an absolute glamour of a day and we're heading to this guy right here, Blue Lagoon. That's about 10 kilometres up there and then inland marginally. Lovely, massive freshwater tea tree uh, sort of inland lake, uh, river system. Uh, and it's going to be an absolutely gorgeous place to have a swim, have a rinse off and, and maybe have a bit of lunch. Anyways, let's hit the beach, or one of six at least, and get after it. I've been mortified, fortified, fitting like a motor car. I ain't regular, feel like Jordan wearing 45. Traumatized, victimized, seen some of my dick die. Knock you off a base with a bat when them niggas slide. Homicide, genocide, televised, emphasize, perpetuating war. Tell that nigga he gon' pick a side. Hood ties from hood lines, my nigga doing dope lines. I'm running to the cops, that's a big exercise. Uh. This is Blue Lagoon, and now despite what the name says from the colour of the water, it is a gorgeous 42 hectare freshwater lagoon located on the northeast corner of Morton Island. It's fed entirely by a freshwater table that lives under the sandy base of this lagoon, and it's got a whole bunch of unique flora and fauna around it, such as shellfish, pippies, algae, and even a stack of dragonflies. Definitely recommend you guys come and check it out. We're about to jump in and have a swim, maybe have some lunch here. What a day too. We're pretty much at the most southern end of Morton Island now and it's almost time for my big surprise to be unveiled to the guys. 
Uh, it's not that much of a surprise really. We're heading to the Gutter Bar, uh, which is a super sick little spot. It's been here for longer than I've been alive, that's for sure. And uh, it's got quite a rich history actually here on the island, which I'll go through when we get there. But I reckon uh, everyone in the convoy behind me is going to be absolutely stoked to get to somewhere that's got even colder drinks than what we have and hopefully some tasty food for us to snack on and uh, with a bit of luck we should also be linking up with Hayden from HD who just arrived on the island and he's meant to be meeting us there as well so fingers crossed catch you when we get there Me is something that is definitely going to be on your Morton Island bucket list, the gutter bar. All the way to the southern end of the island, I brought everyone down here. I think they were probably expecting another beach camp, but no, I brought them to where there's cold beer, yummy food, and a nice place to chill out for the afternoon. And this place actually got its name from Day's Gutter, which is a little sort of bay just north of here. Now, uh, that was sort of a safe place for smaller boats to moor up overnight, and hence the name Gutter Bar. And despite its name, four and a half stars on TripAdvisor, so I'm expecting big things. So, Get all the guys in here, including Max. Oh, and go have some cold ones. Just gonna put that right there. Yeah. the hygiene we've been doing to get that thing started. Like, yeah, I literally, I literally got one of my neighbours, he called me up, he's just like, hey, um, just there's some people trying to get into your car, but they're wearing your shirt, so I think it should be okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Bro, we were like, <laughs> with this 105, because it's yeah. Grace's spare 105 key that's starting and running at the moment. Yeah. Well, I think it's fair to say the gutter bar delivered the goods. Cold drinks, fresh seafood, and well, the whole crew was reunited, Hayden included. It was absolutely perfect, up until we struck mechanical dramas, and of course, it was the 105. So, it wouldn't be a beach trip without the 105 having a whoopsie. This time it's a little bit, oh, we can fix it, I think. Oh, can we fix it, Max? Yeah. So basically, sand drive is pretty hardcore, and obviously this thing loves limmy, so, a lot of boost going on and it just exploded the, the main cooler piping to the turbo. So, sil the silicon, the silicon pipe. So I think the best case scenario is we're probably gonna give it a bit of time to cool down. Um, I think Max has got a spare piece of silicon in the car that'll hopefully work. Otherwise, the uh, 1FZ turbo was 1FZ NA once again. So, it's, it's, it's good. The rummage bus is getting hot because it's too lean. I stubbed my toe on an oyster. This thing's blown an intercooler pipe. But things, things are good today, but um, fingers crossed we can get this sorted. racing in, we've got a broken down car, find out what happens this week on Australia's best four drive YouTube channel. Tides rushing in. Flip on the back side. Make a bunch more sounds when you do it. I love doing this kind of like workshops, depressing. Dark, lonely, middle of the city, full of people. Here, ocean behind you, group of mates, sun setting. You couldn't ask for more, really. Then, okay? this is why I choose to break down at the worst possible time. Always on the beach. Oh, it's I think we're good.
Welcome to Morton Island Cooking with Sam. The water is just 50 metres that way. We have got one of the best campsites on the island, on the west coast at least. Lots of bugs here, lots of bugs. Uh, and we're doing a yummy meal for me and one other person because we don't really have enough for everyone, but that's okay. They can all sort themselves out. And this is going to be called Morton Island Max because we are doing burritos tonight, people, and I'm going to bring you along for the ride. Now, I haven't really prepared anything, but that is okay. Uh, we're going to get after it anyway. There's a couple of basic ingredients you need. A bit of bloody beef mince. There could also be chicken mince. could also be lamb if you're feeling freaky. A bit of old El Paso taco, taco, uh, 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 taco seasoning. This guy right here. Various spice levels. This is a mild one because we're white. Uh, onion, tomato, avo, guacamole, salsa, bit of hummus. Don't know what I'm thinking. Cheese, a pan, and a lot of drinks. And I mean a lot of drinks. Step one, cut up your onion uh, without trying to lose a finger. And um, obviously, this will make you cry, but as my dad always said, it's fine for grown men to cry on camera. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Uh, so basically what we're gonna do is peel this while I cry. Uh, we're gonna chuck this in the frying pan with a buttload of olive oil and um, brown it off. And that's just gonna help make it not disgusting. Uh, and once we've got a little bit of color on the onion, that's when you chuck in your mince. Now that bad boy's not gonna take long. While that's browning off, um, while that's browning off, we're going to then start prepping all our other ingredients. So there's not gonna be any raw meat on this chopping board, which is good because, you know, that would be bad. We're a long way from a dunny, so uh, I've gotta look after the people here. And uh, yeah, it's all gonna be good. It's all gonna be yummy. Get some heat, get some heat in your pan as well is an important thing. All right, boom. You want that nice and hot? I think you want to put your oil in while the pan's cold. This is a, a good trick that I think someone told me or I'm making it up, I can't really remember. Because um, if you put your oil straight into a hot pan, you'll burn the oil straight away and then it tastes like <laughs> So you don't want that. All right, this is good. Quick drink break. We're gonna chuck this in. You hear the sizzle? That's what you want. That's what you want. All right. We're gonna get some color on that onion. Then we're gonna chuck the mince in with a little bit more olive oil. We're also gonna add some salt and pepper to that bad boy before chucking in the taco seasoning. And potentially just a little bit of water as well to sort of help make it all a bit of a sauce. And then as we cook it, it's gonna reduce anyway. It's gonna be delicious. Trust the process. If it doesn't work, then don't trust the process. It's sort of one of those videos. Gonna open this up. Yum, yum, yum. Get that ready. Woolies finest. 82% meat. <laughs> it's 82% meat. I don't know what the f the other 20% is, but uh, that's okay. It's all right. You're only on Morton Island once. All right. Once this onion softens up, then we're going to add the mince. And that's going to be yummy. And then we're really going to be cooking with gas. Tonight's cooking segment is brought to you by Brookvale Union. If you're watching, I uh, drink a lot of these. Sponsorship would be nice. Um, lemon squash, 6%, low sugar. Watch the waste. Yum. Spatula, spatula time. It already smells good. We could just cut all the steps and eat the onion. And make my life easy. No? No? No, they want dinner. The onion started to go translucent, which is what you want to see. So next up is going to be the meat, so just add a little bit more oil. Spray oil makes your life easy while you're camping. You can also use it as air guard and deodorant, so that's good. Chuck him down there. You're gonna break up your mince pretty quickly because as soon as it starts to cook in clumps, it's, it's all over. It's a bit like an FT swapped GU patrol. No one wants it, so. I'm just gonna really quickly turn that down. We'll get this taco seasoning ready to go and then we're gonna bang this in with some water. That's going to be a delicious little situation. And then we will prepare the rest of our ingredients for the burrito. Ooh, yum. Yum, yum, yum. All right. Now, one of my helpful assistants over here is going to bring me some water. Thanks, perfect. That's beautiful. It's important to share beers with you, mates. Just give me, give me like three. <laughs> Reminds me of something. Else. I don't know if there's any in there. That might just have dust in it. 
Yeah, oh, give me. That's <laughs> sad, isn't it? Nah, it's, right, that's just a standard Monday morning. Oh, here we, oh, go. Here we go. Bit of that, bit of that, bit of that, bit of that, bit of that. All right, bit of that. All right, now by the old scale, that's about 1 20th of a hectare of water. If you could take that off me, thank, thank you, before right. I slip a disc again. I'm definitely going to need that. Take your beer, yeah, grab him, grab him. All right, now we bang in our seasoning. And then we're just going to bloody stir this around. And this is, some would call it folding, others would call it mixing. I'd probably say infusing with the seasoning and, you know, all the goodness. Uh, and then what's going to happen after here? <laughs> this is so... Sorry, guys, we're... We're professionals. Um, so we're just gonna let that sort of sit there in its own yumminess for a minute and just on a bit of a simmer, and that's just gonna help reduce the liquid down into deliciousness. Um, all right, over here, over here. Now, now's the fun stuff. This is where we get to chop up the ingredients that are gonna go into our burrito. Over here, we've got lettuce. We'll probably just rip that up and bloody chuck it in. Um, you know, like Mike Tyson chucks in the towel, that kind of thing. We're gonna chop up an avocado. Make sure you're careful with knives and avos, otherwise it's gonna end up in disaster. Tomato, dice this bad boy up, I think. If you've been camping for a while, oh, you are too good. Outstanding. This will be us later, you and me, on the spoon. That's kinda of cute. Do you wanna be big or little? I'd have to be little spoon. I think so. All right, perfect. Here's your, thank you for your service. Can you eat that raw? Do you wanna eat it off my finger? You won't do it. <laughs> that has been some places you would not believe. Um, we don't need to wash our hands because we're, he's actually my dad, so. Um, you can't catch the diseases that we have twice. This knife is blunt as fuck as well, just a fun fact for those playing along at home. All right, thickly diced. There's a lot on, Jesus Christ. I don't know how Gordon Ramsay does it. Stir this up. Oh my God, it's looking good. Juicy little onion yumminess. All right, that's looking good. So for the avo, I am just going to get it everywhere, for starters, and then just sort of slice it up. Yum, yum, yum. Ooh. Delicious. The tomatoes, we're going for a little dice situation instead of a dice instead of slice, you know? All right, oh, the mince is smelling good. It's looking almost done. We got that, all right. Over here, nothing like a bit of iceberg, we're just gonna you can be pretty rough with this gear. That'll probably do for him. Chuck this back over here. A beach burrito type situation is a good way to get your kids to eat vegetables if they're bastards. So you can, because you can hide all sorts of, you know, once the avo's smashed up, they're not going to pick it off. Um, the best part about this is you sort of get rid of that. Almost disaster. Almost disaster. That's all right. That's okay. Mince is looking good. Mince is probably done, to be honest. And you know that because it started to stick to the bottom of the pan because I forgot to stir it. So, I think that's good. We're gonna turn that off. This is all looking good. Yum, drink break. And then it's pretty much time to serve this up. So I'm gonna show you how to assemble your burrito like a, like a legend and um, gonna hook in. And you can all watch me. <laughs> you can all watch me enjoy it. <laughs> Now there's two things I reckon that are absolutely essential for a beach trip like this. The first is good suspension because, as you can see, beaches have a lot of washouts. The second is a good set of tyres and that's exactly what the camera crew has on their vehicle. Having the Maxxis Razor MTs fitted to the camera car means a couple of things. The first is that aired out to 18 PSI like they are now, we have excellent traction on the sand and haven't gotten bogged yet. They also have an armoured sidewall which means they've got a super tough sidewall with really good puncture resistance which means we can sort of drive this quite harshly through a lot of the sticks in the sand and not worry about getting a tyre stake and having to deal with a flat tyre. They also have staggered shoulder blocks, which means when they are aired out like they are now, even the shoulder lugs and the sidewall lugs are helping bite into that sand and drive the car forward, which just gives you that added confidence and that added sort of, uh, I guess, reliability and capability on the sand that other tyres just simply don't have. So big ups. I ran them on the Naughty 40 on Fraser Island. We're running them on the camera car now on Morton Island. Absolutely can't get enough. All right, step one is we're gonna chuck some, the soft things on first, because obviously, think about this. You put all your yummy ingredients in and you forgot to spread your spread. What are you gonna spread it on? You know what I mean? Think about that. So this is just a bit of Chris's guac. Chris isn't a person, it's a brand. Person eating number two, would you like? No, okay, understood. 
I'm going to chuck some of this in, all right? So we'll get another camera going on over here. But, and it's important to use a steak knife while you do this because it makes life easy. Yum, 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 yum. And the beautiful thing about cooking on Morton under LED lights is you get heaps of bugs in your food. So um, let me just get this ant out of this. That's all good. All right, so. As you, as you guac, and that just makes life easy because obviously you're not going to bloody whip up a guac while you're on Morton Island because you're going to have sand all through it and it's going to be just hard and you have to bring all the ingredients and a blender and all that sort of stuff. So having a good to go in a spready little thing is good. Next up, salsa. I'm going to tip some of this on. Just a couple of bloody, couple of dollops. Salsa. Salsa. Right over here, over here, over here, over here. Yip, 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 yip. Yum, 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 yum. All right. Ooh, delicious. Next, we're gonna go slap some, slap some meat down. Ooh, yum, 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 yum. All right, yes. Yes. Very good. Yum. Oh, over here as well. Try and do that. Right. Okay. Yum. All right. Next up, we're going to slap in some av avacado. If you don't get that meme, you're probably too young. Shouldn't be watching this. That's what I would say about that. Bit of lettuce. Bit chop him up. That can just get slapped in there like so. Bit of tomato on the toppy tip tap. I also said I was going to salt and pepper the mince and I didn't do it, so don't worry about that. Avocado. All right, bit of bit of avo, bit of avocado. All right, bit of this, bit of this. Yum 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 yum. All right, folks. This is about to get freaky over here. Yum. Boom. Lots of cheese. The trick is to fill it so much you can't wrap it. <laughs> now, if you want to watch how you wrap it, how you're meant to wrap it, you do the bottom first so it doesn't all... F There's too much in this wrap. I f***ed up. <laughs> oh, sh wrap, wrap the bottom and then wrap the sides like this so that it doesn't all fall out the bottom and just falls out the top. And that's Morton next for you. That's good. You got lettuce, you got bloody tomato, you got avo. Do you want to have a, have a bite? I'll have a bite. I'll have a, bite. a bite of my burrito. This is the best burrito you ever eaten. Hmm. It's up there, eh? I made the salsa from scratch. What's interesting to me is mm -hmm. that it tastes like it oh. has sour cream in there, but you didn't put it in. So I'm wondering what food's gone off to cause that. It's just because the mince is a week old. Yeah, it started to ferment. But I cooked it anyway. But that's another tip, I guess. A pro yeah. Yeah. Let your meat go off and cook it anyway, and it sort of gives you that creamy off taste. Yeah. Overall, quite yummy. Oh, that's probably the avocado you can taste. I didn't think I got that. No, nah, in this in this thing, oh. I don't know. The, the the trick is we don't know. I also have hummus we didn't put in there, but that's okay. I am seeing more ingredients that, that missed, missed it. Yeah, there. don't worry about that too much. That's how you make a burrito on the go. It's quite easy. All you need is a little, a little El Cheapo gas cooker and you can have an absolute blast. And uh, yeah, if you want to give it a crack, don't ask me for tips because you can probably do it better than I can. And um, you going to eat this. I'm going to need another bite though. Yeah, there you go. Have a bite. We'll get a fire going, yeah. have a thousand more beers. And then um, tomorrow I think we'll, I've got a little spoil in for you and we might bring these guys along for the ride in the morning. Bit of a treat, eh? How good. Let's enjoy the evening. Yeah, looking forward to it. Oh. A little bit crunchy, I think that's the sand. <laughs> <laughs>we got the camera crew, they're doing their thing. Andy's taken off early this morning for the barge because his silly ass has to work tomorrow. Hayden Lenny, Grace and Max, hello. Good morning. 
These guys are taking off later tonight, so they're still here for today. So hopefully this rain holds off. For brekkie today, we're doing we're like a big breakfast. We've got some like diced up mushrooms, which we're going to do. We're just doing some oil, some bacon. We're going to fry some eggs. Hayden's going to try and... Uh, Hayden's going to try and poach some eggs in a jet boil. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, how bloody good does this look? Crispy bacon or not? Comment below. I reckon 50-50 I reckon is the go. Toasting the bread. Yes, we are. Yum, 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 yum. Yeah. Thank you. Some mushrooms. I'm not even filming what I'm doing. I got distracted. How good is it? Oh. Now there's no denying, Andy has built one hell of a 76 series here. Superior coil conversion, 35 inch Maxxis razors, and all the fancy PBS gear you could poke a stick at. But sadly, he had to go back to reality and head to work. So mate, we'll catch you next time. So not even five kilometers up from Tangaluma Rex is Cowan Cowan. And one of the favorite spots in Cowan Cowan is actually here on the beach. You can't drive to it, but what you can do is park up just before it. And there's a whole bunch of World War II relics and sort of wrecks here on the island still from back in the day. So we've got the guys in combo. We're just gonna pull up where we can and walk down and check it all out. I think it's a pretty cool little bit of, uh, a little bit of history here on Morton Island and um, definitely something you should put on your bucket list. Behind me is Fort Cowan Cowan, one of the last sort of major World War II relics you can easily see on Morton Island. It was built in 1937 and was operational up until 1945 and housed a whole bunch of officers and military personnel during World War II uh, to help protect the Queensland coastline. This Fort Cowan Cowan was known for anti-aircraft guns, it had a small hospital, lots of accommodation plus underground rooms uh, for storage and bunkering and that kind of thing. And it really is a true sort of historical relic of World War II. You can come up close, see it, touch it and uh, really get a sort of an idea and understanding of just how rough the conditions would have been back in the 30s during the war. Uh, it's super sick that it's still above sand for us to see today. We're just on the Tangalama Bypass at the moment and our next tick box on our bucket list of Morton is the Big Sand Hills. Well, I guess Big Sand Hill and Little Sand Hill. Now they're on the west coast of the island, right down the southern end. So we've just filled up a Bulwa at uh, Castaways there. If you're wondering how much fuel is there, it's 70 bucks for 20 litres. So I recommend you get jerry cans over on the mainland because unless you're like me, you are... Uh, you're gonna be emptying your pockets. We're heading down there now. We do have sandboards with us, but we've just had a bit of rain today, so the sand might not be that kind to us. But we'll at least go and have a look, have a little walk up there. Apparently the view is absolutely spectacular. We'll uh, head down there and see what we can't find. Look, I'm in line with the stars, I'm in sync with the earth. Ten toes deep, flower child from the turf. I never switch sides, like even when I die, I'm a ride for the squad, let her ties in the hearse. I've been on a vibe kind of hard to describe. I'm in between, I'm good and it's fine, but I'm tired of the grind. Then I come alive in the night to realize I'm in the middle of the time of my life. Uh, we're here at Big Sand Hill. Here on Morton. Sort of like west coast, quite far south. If you keep going a little bit further south, you'll get to Little Sand Hill. But obviously, oh, it's, it gets so steep the closer you get to it. Like, this will do no justice, but that's there the cars. This is holding it level. And then it just up, 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 up. Oh, <sighs> okay. Struggle straight, here we go. I don't think my legs are cut out for this. <laughs> oh, update, this is <laughs> So, if you're a heavy boy, every step you take, you slide back at least 70% of the step you took. What that means is, it's shit. Slide pressure's gonna be through the roof. It's only one word, one way to describe it. Kind of a thing. Um, if you've got a private helicopter, I recommend that. Just drop it at the top. 
sandboard down. Hey, you're frothing. Everyone's stoked. View on it though. The sweat on me. Jesus. Looking at the clock, still falling like rock. Yeah, I'm headed to the bus, then I'm falling like yeah. You'll get it. I ain't looking at the clock, still falling like rock. When I get, when I get, when I get high. Oh, I'm so scared. I'm so scared. Record, record, I still want to act like a ghost. Let me do it with the nigga. Oh, you stop. Get the A boss. Uncle Sam, fuck out the back. Bro, the plot, but get a whack. Contract, give me the max. I got lap on my back. You ain't that. Then it's whoa, 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 whoa. For the record, I'm done trying to make y'all comfortable. For the record, you ain't trying to grow, then it's done for you. Morton truly is unspoiled paradise. The western sunsets, the wrecks, the sights and sounds absolutely everywhere. You're camping with mates, it's the summer, it doesn't get much better than this. Well, it had come time to sadly say goodbye to Max, but mate, we'll see you soon. Thanks for joining us. Sam, ever since I was on Fraser's West Coast about 12 months ago, I've been itching for a western sunset yet again, but here we are, Morton Island, beautiful day. Just turned out an absolute treat and we got a western sunset. Mate, it's pretty special living on the East Coast. There's not a lot of times you get this opportunity and Morton has turned it on. Yeah, that's it. Beautiful afternoon. Water's glass out. Sun's just going down now, mate. Can't get much better than that. Let's get to camp, mate. We've got an absolute glamour of a spot. We'll head there, do a bit of a cook up, I reckon, and... Uh... Think it'd be cold, what do you reckon? Sounds good, mate. Turned off the Tangaluma Bypass Road and now we're heading towards the desert. I think this is just known as Desert Track. It's about 1.5 kilometers. I've never been here and I haven't even done any research on it. I've just noticed it on the map and thought, you know what, bugger it. I suppose we may as well come and check it out. So just punching down this quite narrow two-way little inland track and uh, see what we can't find. Hayden, mate, you got a copy? Yeah, mate. We haven't been so lucky with the weather today, unfortunately. I was thinking about taking you up north to uh, Champagne Pools, but I'm thinking maybe a quick detour into uh, the Morton Desert first up might be a good way to kill some time while the rain clears. Yeah, sounds good to me. I'm keen to see how this desert's different from the desert we were in yesterday, mate. So looking forward to it. Oh, we just get some bumps way too fast. No, I think it'll be cool, mate. It's um, probably uh, one of the things that people do least on the island, I think. It's right by, right by the resort, but be, uh, it'd be rude for us not to go have a peek at least. Sounds good, mate. Let us down a little bit with the weather today. We had a little bit of a late start this morning. We thought we'd come and have a little detour through the desert because none of us had sort of seen it or heard of it before. And I mean, it's pretty wild. You pop out of this sort of two kilometer inland, quite heavily forested track, and then there's just this massive expanse. So uh, while we wait for the sort of rain to clear before we can go out and walk through the dunes, I'm just uh, chopping up some mushrooms. The girls are gonna do a bit of a fry up. Uh, we're just gonna have some sort of, it's like an old school big breakfast, I guess. But uh, with whatever leftover stuff we have in our fridge. So it's gonna be a bit of a bit so, but it should be yummy. When you wish to be free, you look up to the sky and call on me. Then if the color in your sky, take away the gray. Turn the roof to a floor on a Saturday. I'll be tall and tonight you do what I say. I'm just a getaway, I'm just a getaway. I'll make you warm if it's really and I probably make you say things you wouldn't do. Now, 
One thing about going on an island trip where there is nothing but salt water everywhere is that your glass and windscreens get absolutely covered in crud. I'm talking bugs from the drive up, grime, salt, sand, general dirt, and it's absolutely putrid. Plus, it makes it super hard to see through, whether it's the side windows, the windscreen, or the back glass. Plus, even your mirrors. And one thing that I've started carrying in the car at all times is Chemical Guys Street Free Glass Cleaner. Now, this stuff, I love because it's super versatile. Not only is it a fantastic streak-free glass cleaner, but it's also perfectly safe to use on painted surfaces, rubber seals, plus all interior surfaces, it's completely safe to use. What that means is that when you are four-wheel driving and your windscreen gets all gunked up or the side windows do and you can't see the gorgeous view like you used to, you can grab this out, grab a microfiber cloth and give it a clean on the go, which means you're always gonna have perfect vision, which for driving is super important, but more importantly, when you're full-wheel driving, you need to be able to see where you're going. So make sure you get some Chemical Guys Street-Free Glass Cleaner. Keep it in the door of your full-wheel drive. Trust me, you won't regret it. Really good for cleaning your side mirrors too. Maybe the other side. Much better. And there's snack out in the desert. So this is what we call, it's a natural formation that occurs. It's called ligma. <laughs> I'll give you $25 to take a bite out of the top of it. It kind of is like an ice cream cone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the sand is very sandy today. I call that zinc. and shows us how his 80 series rally drives through the inland track here. Um, just putting through this little mango area, which is super sick. We'll give you a little squiz. Old truck, sand driving, and an absolutely gorgeous island. This is what owning a four-wheel drive is all about. If you want to see a little bit more about the vehicles in this episode, specifically Hayden's 80 series, check out the Sus with Sand episode we did, where we go into depth about all the modifications. Just like that, our Morton Island adventure has come to an end. Five days of absolute bliss. Sadly, some of the convoy had to head back early for work, but we didn't, and we made the absolute most of it. And I reckon we ticked just about everything off the Morton Island bucket list that we possibly could in this time, and the weather produced the goods. If you like what you've seen, then make sure you jack a comment below, like, subscribe to the channel. It's been an absolute blast, guys. Until next time. We'll do us both. I don't want both. Hey. This car. <laughs> well, is it normal for you to be foaming at the mouth? <laughs> what? <laughs> Imagine how many people would roll their cars on that sand dune, right? But how many people wouldn't? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> now I reckon that these wrecks could have been pulled out. 76 series, maybe an 80 series, and beautiful. Would have pulled it straight out. That was terrible.